Hola, you techies! Welcome to the Immigrant Programmers. My name is Kritika, and today we're going to learn to write the perfect code. Code that's perfectly formatted, code free from any syntactical or any semantical error. Isn't that the dream, though? Yes, indeed, and let's see how we can fulfill this beautiful dream together using an easy JavaScript library called Standard.js, also known as Standard Style. But before we dive into the details of how we're going to use Standard Style, let me address something here. So some of you might already be using a combination of a linter and a formatter, such as like an ESLint as the linter and Prettier as the formatter. So you must be already using something like that in your code bases and might be wondering, um, wait, I'm going to pass on this. I don't need this because I'm already sorted. Well, let me tell you, you need this. You totally need this. And I'll tell you why in a minute. OK, so just hold on to that thought. OK, so first, if you're wondering, why don't I understand any of the terms used so far? Let me tell you, it's totally normal. So I'll start by quickly discussing a couple of keywords that we're going to need uh, to move forward, forward with this video. So first of all, what's a linter? A linter catches bugs. It basically looks for programmer errors in your code. So JS lint was the first original JavaScript linter, which was released in 2002. So that's like a hundred JavaScript years ago. So we won't even talk about that. Then we had JS hint that came out in 2010, offering more rules and additional configurability. So that's still pretty old. Eh? Now, what most people use is ES lint which came out like in 2013, I guess, and has better ES support and additional style rules catering to how your code should look. So it also has a good plugin support, which also allows like developers to create their own rules. So that's pretty much, um, that's like widely popular in the tech industry as a linter for JavaScript now. Okay, so coming back to why you need standard style, simply because it saves you time. It's a JavaScript style guide, linter, and a formatter all in one. And now we're going to discuss three major advantages to understand how standard style can save you time. So first of all, there's no configuration needed whatsoever. It's This makes it the easiest way to enforce code quality in your project. You got no decisions to make and no configuration files to manage. So for example, if you were to use ESLint instead, you had to manage the .ESLint RC configuration file, but using standard JS makes it pretty easy because all you have to do is npm install standard and start using it, and it just works for you. All right, moving on to the second point, it automatically formats your code. So all you have to do is run standard dash dash fix and you say goodbye to your messy or inconsistent code. So that's pretty easy and straightforward as well. And the last but the most important point is that it helps you catch style issues and programmer errors early in the development process. And this not only saves you time in debugging your code later on, in case of an error, but it also saves precious code review time by eliminating the back and forth between reviewer and the contributor. So now we can actually look at the types of errors. I mean, a few examples of errors that standard can quickly catch. And to make it a little bit more interesting, I've come up with a short pop quiz for you. So there we go. So there's like two examples here. And you could go ahead and pause the video and try to figure out if you can find some errors in this code. So we're going to take this on a case by case basis. So we're going to go with the first one first. So um, now is your time. You can pause the video and look for any error that you can find in the first code. So were you successful? Were you able to find the error in the first code snippet? If not, let me tell you. And I'm going to do that as soon as you smash the like button. Done? Cool. OK, so you see the parameter H is actually duplicated at the second position and at the sixth position. So this is probably a result of a copy paste that went wrong, or maybe a new developer is trying to refactor the code. And let me tell you that this is totally allowed in JS, unless you are in the strict mode, by the way, which you can enter by mentioning use strict at the beginning of your JS file. But then this would be flagged as an error. But as mentioned previously, if you don't use the strict mode, your interpreter is going to let it pass and it won't flag this as an error. So to discuss how this is bad for your code, it's that when you have more than one parameter in the function with the same name, the last occurrence 
of that parameter is going to overshadow the first occurrence. So for example, here when we try to access the age, so the second parameter, so for example the age at the first, second, third, fourth, fifth and the sixth position. So this age will basically, we're going to grab the value for this age argument instead of grabbing the value for the age parameter which was passed in the second argument. Okay, but the thing is that you won't necessarily know that there's a problem in the code because it's not that straightforward. Okay, so let's move on to the next code snippet. Were you able to find the error here? So this one is really subtle, but it's but it's a really easy mistake to make and it's really common. You might probably have experienced this yourself as well. In conditional statements, it's easy to mistype a comparison operator such as like a strict equality operator, which is the triple equals to, or a loose equality operator, also known as a type coercion operator, which is a double equals to. You could accidentally use an assignment operator instead of those comparison operators, so like I did here. But now, this if statement will always be evaluated to true, because what I did here was I set the preference field of the user object to mango, and I actually assigned this value here. So this equality, the, this if statement is always going to be evaluated as true, and this if condition block will always run. But this is really hard for human eyes to spot, but it's tri trivially easy for like a linter to catch. So don't worry, you got standard now. Okay, so now next take a look at the official document for standard.js. And it's the first link that popped up. So this is the official document. And let me show you who are the clients for standard.js. So this gives you all the more reason to use this library. So you can see Node.js, NPM, GitHub. So almost all the big players in the tech industry, they use standard. Okay, so now let's see how we can use standard in my code base. So to install standard, you basically just go npm i standard and then dash dash save and dash dev. So you install it as a dev dependency, but I've already installed it on my computer, so I, I won't run this. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to run standard to check to see what all errors are there in my code, if any. Okay, so let's go. I'm going to hit enter. All right, so you see uh, standard detected some problems in my code base and let's take a look at what they are. So I have two files here, test and test2, and these are the two examples that we did and that we covered like previously. Okay, so the first problem was a parsing error argument name clash. So the example that we did where the age argument was duplicated, standard successfully detected the problem and it flagged it as an error. So now I'm gonna go ahead and solve this issue. Okay, and then it says expected a conditional expression and instead saw an assignment, but it found that in test two and the problem that we have here. So I'm gonna fix this too. And it says unexpected constant condition and expected indentation. So the indentation problems, basically when you run standard fix, they're going to solve automatically. So standard solves that for you automatically. All it cannot solve are some of the ambiguous error that you need to do manually. Um, so like here, if you see, they also suggest that run standard fix to automatically fix some problems. So let's see what happens when I hit enter. And there you go. We have solved all the previous errors, but now it flags a new error and let's see what that is. Process user data is assigned a value but never used. So here um, you see that we have so many arguments, so many parameters to the process user data method. And also we're creating this method here, but we're never calling it. And also we're not using these arguments. So I'm not gonna fix it right now, but you get the idea, right? You see how standard can detect some really crucial problems and how it can fix most of them. 
on its own. Um, and if you're smart, you can add standard to your test script in the package.json file like I did here, so that every time you run npm test before building your code, the standard tests are run implicitly and automatically, and you won't have to run standard and standard fix every time you make some changes. So let's test this out here. So I run npm test. So you see standard is already running and it's automatically running the test. And I see this error here, which I've seen before when I manually ran standard. So it's, it's a good practice. And if you're just as lazy as I am, you can search the marketplace for plugins available for standard. So there's like plenty of them. And I'm going to go grab this one. So this is the official plugin for standard JS for Visual Studio Code, of course, because I'm using VS Code here. And I'm just going to go ahead and install it. And it's done. But there's plugin available for other code editors as well. I mean, for Atom, WebStorm, etc. I recommend you to go check out their official docs and find a suitable plugin for your code editor. So now, since I installed the plugin for standard, now you see I don't even have to run standard manually because it like reflects the error right there. So you see the error that I was getting before is right here. And here I changed this to reflect the error now. So this is like really easy peasy, right? So on the last note, I'm back in the official documentation for standard JS because um, for those of you who are already using standard JS library, uh, a new version for standard JS was released. Standard 16 is here. So I want to take a look at the changelog file with you guys. So let's go here and let's see what all new features were added in standard 16. So you see that uh, they improved the performance and they improved the performance on the order of minutes. So that's a massive, that's a huge improvement. And also they added the support for git ignore file. And here, this one's super cool. So they added new extension. So now they have the extension for TS, that is the TypeScript file as well. So now you can use standard library for um, linting, formatting and um, styling your TypeScript code as well. So that's great. And there are some change features here and some new rules that were added to standard JS um, book of rules, let's say. So you can go ahead and read about um, all of the details here. So if you're still here, thank you so much for making till the end of this video. And thank you so much uh, for watching this video. I hope you got the value for your time and I, I hope it was helpful for you. If you have any questions or comments about the standard JS library, put them down in the comment section. And I'm going to put a link in the description for the official documentation for the standard JS library as well. So finally, just smash that like button, subscribe to the immigrant programmers and uh, just social support. So signing off until next time.